Good evening, everyone. We welcome you all to Ortho TV online Nucoxia Digitalk series. This webinar is brought to us by an unrestricted educational grant from Zydus Cadilla, the makers of Nucoxia. We have today our esteemed speaker, Dr. Raj Shekhar Keti, and we have our esteemed panelist, Dr. Salim Patel, and he is going to introduce the speaker and the topic for today. So over to you, Dr. Salim. Thank you. Thank you, Neeraj. So uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to Ortho TV for this Nucoxia Digi Talk. Our speaker for today is, as Dr. Neeraj has already mentioned, it's uh, Dr. Raj Shekhar Keti. He's a senior orthopedic surgeon and a joint replacement surgeon at Fortis Hospital, Bangalore, with over 20 years of experience and fellowships to his credit in the name of Dr. Ranawat Center in uh, USA, then in Mumbai with Dr. CJ Tucker. He has been an awardee for Dr. Dholakya's best paper presentation award at the ROC 2016 and 18 on a topic that is lateralization of the femoral entry point in TKRs in a bored femur. The same award was again received uh, to Sir at the American Academy of Hip and Knee Surgery in Dallas in November 2016. He has n number of publications in both national and international journals and has written multiple chapters in various textbooks in orthopedics. Sir is an esteemed member of the Indian Society of Hip and Knee Surgery the Indian Orthopedic Association, Bombay Orthopedic Society, Karnataka and Bangalore Orthopedic Society, and the Indian Arthroscopy Society. So today, uh, I hand over this session to Dr. Rajshekar Keti, who will be talking about TKR in a virus knee. So over to you, sir. Okay. This, uh, Salim, I think you should yeah, start. I'll just stop, sir. Yes, sir, you can go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sir, Dr. Salim and Dr. Neeraj. It was a, a great pleasure to speak on this topic at this type point of time. And just uh, go to the directly the topic. Uh, just wanted to speak about the alignment in a board legs. If you're doing a conventional total knee, as all of you uh, know about the board legs and uh, sometimes it, those who are used to that uh, knee replacement with a conventional technique it is little difficult and tricky so how to get the proper alignment unless you have in your center it is a navigation is there or other techniques you can use but if those things are not there at least uh, I can just share my experience and you can make use of this and uh, you can get the good alignment so the post-op alignment he is very important and there is enough literatures and everyone is aware of this and otherwise if the alignment is not good and uh, this leads to aseptic loosening of the tibia. So the aseptic loosening of the tibia is uh, very common more than the femur. Again, uh, there are enough, enough literatures showing that uh, uh, the aseptic loosening is common with the, if it is a virus alignment either because of the femur or the tibia. So ideal alignment is of 4 to, 4 to 10 degree of valgus achieved with 75% uh, of cases only. This is uh, published by Malakshmola and remaining around 17% either there will be a virus and around 1.9% cases there will be a valgus alignment. So the virus tibial alignment was associated with 3.2 times high, you know, greater risk of failure in a TK that is studied by Fang et al. So this is what uh, uh, tibia Boeing, I was talking about. There is a high incidence of uh, we have seen in Indian patients who both the femoral and tibial Boeing and leads to osteoarthritis and because of the maybe long standing oste osteomalacia leads to virus alignment. So the Boeing is defined as uh, the tibial Boeing is defined as anything which is uh, Boeing which is more than 5 degree, I consider as a Boeing which is milder degree. The Boeing is nothing but the lateral Boeing of the distal axis angulated towards the midline. So the extramedullary guide is ideal method to use the uh, tibia, but uh, hardly few people are using intramedullary technique. But uh, if you use intramedullary technique, there is uh, problems with uh, this technique. I'll just show you. The present study 
I just wanted to mention about this uh, TBL accuracy, how to get the accurate alignment in the virus knee, is that uh, uh, because of the bowing, if you use the intracondylar remnants as a reference point, it might lead to virus alignment. So we are, what we hypothesis is that based on the degree of the deformity, we can use the lateral condylar remnants as a reference point and you can use a, get an accurate alignment. So we have studied around of a cases of around 163 cases, there were 240 knees and in that both TBI 62 patients and in that case, the number of knees is around 95 knees with an average age of uh, 64 years and uh, mean follow-up of uh, 3.4 years. We have seen that uh, Boeing is uh, seen in, in the, all these patients around the incidences around say, Thirty-eight point three percent. The selection criteria of Boeing is, uh, especially the patients with uh, osteoarthritis with the coronal plane deformities. The exclusion criteria: if there is a post-traumatic knee arthritis, either the, because of the tibial condylar fra fractures or monotibial tibial plate fractures, or the revision knee replacement where there is a virus deformity. So that Boeing is. Uh, was measured with a preoperative scanogram. Here is a picture showing. And uh, then in that case, we draw a line from along the medullary axis. So you can see this is the medullary canal axis, this. And uh, you draw a line from the center of inter center of intracondylar eminence, perpendicular line, from the center of the TBR distally, then join these two angles. Where is the angle? That angle gives you there's the deformity of the TBR. So suppose if this angle is around eight to 10 degrees, then you draw a line from the distally, just pass it from the distally, go straight to the lateral tibular eminence, where it comes from the intracondylar eminence to the laterally, how many millimeter is coming? Say around eight to, eight to 10 millimeter means eight to 10 degree Boeing, usually eight to 10 millimeter. So that amount of lateral reference you used to use, that I'll show you on table. So the best uh, method in this case is we need to avoid the patella, you know, dissect out the lateral part of the tibia where we are going to place the jig. So once you place the jig, you mark the intercondylar eminence as a reference point first primary. Then from there, you can say 10 millimeter, let's take the lateral eminence as a reference point. Then your center of the tibia jig place should place on the lateral area. From then you put a pin and uh, connected, we can put the rod if you want, or you can eyeball and you can see where is a, your alignment. So you can see this is a perfectly going center. So adjustment we can necessary, we can put and we can put the other pin. With this, if you cut the tibia, your accuracy of the tibia cut, usually mm -hmm. very good. So in our patients, the bowing of the tibia in 70% of cases is five to eight degrees. And 26.3% of cases is 9 to 12 degrees, more than 12 degrees in 3 tibia, around uh, say 3.2%. So in this uh, method, we are able to get an uh, nearly accurate alignment in uh, all these patients. And there is significant improvement in the knee score. I don't think that the knee score had any value in this case. This is maybe the helpful in case of uh, post-operative long-term alignment. So the post-op mechanical axis is in within three millimeter in 70% of cases, more than three millimeter on the medial side in 26% of cases, and more than 12 degrees in more than three, in three patients. So the post-operative, the, we are able to get accurate alignment of the TBI around six to 10 degree of valgus alignment in 92, 94% of cases, there was no lateral overhang of the tibial implant. So the linear aggression analysis shows that there's a positive correlation between the going of the tibia and the lateral reference point. We can use the internal rod, but uh, to get an accurate alignment, but uh, problem is uh, uh, in Caucasian's knee, they can use it because of the straight tibia. 
but in our cases because of the bowing you are not able to insert the tibia and then there they there make can you induce an error intramedullary guides in asian patients uh, there is a they have done studies showing that more than 20 error rate is more than 20% we can cause uh, uh, you know error in the tibial cut and uh, because of the difficult to pass the intramedullary cord along the length and you can use a short rods but if you use a short rods again tibial cut alignment changes so the extramedullary guide is a you know a technique is the best thing and it is a gives an accurate alignment the technique is only as i mentioned if you use the technique you can use there are different techniques which is uh, uh, they they use a center of talus as a reference point it is difficult to precisely get the talus especially in obese uh, uh, bulky angles and tibialis anterior is also the same thing it difficult to palpate sometimes the under anesthesia and uh, obese patients and computer assisted surgery we can use as an accurate alignment to the tibia but uh, again the error rate is again it depends upon your registration if your registration is wrong it can get us uh, tibial cut either varus or valgus and it is uh, not available everywhere and it is time consuming and expensive patient specific instrumentations have not been uh, very supportive the literatures and they come and gone and they costly and uh, time consuming so tagamani et al showed that in asian patient with the varus deformity with the bowed tibia the most of the time the center of the tibial plateau is either usually the medial so the lesser, the lateral tibial condylar eminence is the center so maybe you should use this reference point to use an accurate alignment so comparison the two methods you can see here where the center of the intercondylar eminence is used as a reference point we have 87.7 degree varus this is a tibia is slightly varus you can see this is a in lateral condylar eminence is a reference point where the alignment is almost 90 so kim et al showed that in the saw bone model the tibia resection in varus deformity is so acceptable degree of alignment was achieved when using a lateral condylar eminence so in our study in our study the lateral intercondylar eminence acts as a reference point and we used it and it gives an a really accurate alignment so in conclusion it's a simple reliable easily reproducible not reported earlier you can get an accurate alignment of the tibia bone especially in bone tibia you get an accurate alignment of the tibia we published this in journal of uh, a korean journal and uh, this is about the tibia i'm just going to speak on the femur the speak you can see the femur is how they are bowed so how to get that accurate alignment in this case if they don't have a navigation or uh, you know uh, a scanograms so what we have to do is either just take on full length femur if you don't have any scanograms if that you can get a really a uh, rough assessment where you can assess this uh, bowed tibia and we can measure the angles the bowing of the femur is been reported in significant in asian patients and uh, bowing is also reported in western population in 14% of cases how they come to know is when they doing it, then they used to assess the ct scans of all these patients and in that case in those patients around 14% they show on that femur is also bowed in these occasions so the variation in the distal femoral cut is 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 around between the 80 you know 84 to 115 degree that means there is so much variation is there it is being reported by malex wala the incidence of potential error of unacceptable femoral cut is as much as 40% in the femoral bowing suppose if there is a straight femur it is only 8% so the propensity of errors of the distal femoral cut is high in these cases so they recommend to use either extramedullary jig or computer navigation extramedullary jigs is because of the bulkiness and they are not very accurate because to get the idea of the center of femoral head is difficult 
So we use this technique of intermediate jig in case of Boeing is that if you use a conventional entry point, this rod is going to hit the lateral cortex and uh, then you end up in using a short rod and uh, that leads to undercutting of the deformity. So when you little lateralized based off your bowing, say around eight degree, if there's a bow is there, you lateralize by around eight degree, eight millimeter, you can able to reach the isthmus and you can get an accurate alignment. So from Jan 2011, 2014, we have done around 136 cases. So in that we have seen is 44.9% incidence of Boeing. So the Boeing percentage in our patients is 44% patients cases and uh, an average BM of 29.9 and diagnosis almost all patients are osteoarthritis. We are not including any post-traumatic cases in this or series and mean follow-up of uh, 3.2 years. So what is Boeing? Boeing is defined as the distal axis is, is moved towards the midline and the shaft is bowed on the left side. So we have included osteoarthritis as I told and post-traumatic arthritis, deformities of femur, the two old fractures, revision to total knees are excluded. And you can see here the Boeing is defined as the described by the measured with the help of method which is by described by Mulaji et al earlier and the pre-operative scanograms is very important either the XK scanogram or CT scanogram you can use if you don't have all this facility either you can just take the full length femur where you can measure this angle this is an example I'll show you see this is a so much bored femur so going a femur is almost uh, you can say 13 14 degrees there so Normal conventional jigs, if you use a center intermediate reference as a point, this 13 degree, uh, you can't cut the distal femur because the maximum distal femur cut angle we can get is only maximum is 9 degree with the conventional technique of our uh, jigs. So how to get that it's 8 connection? So what we can do is if you little lateralize, maybe 9 to 10 millimeter, and then you are able to reduce the angle of correction instead of 13 degree, you can reduce to 8 degree or 7 degree as I shown here. With that, we are able to get reasonable alignment and we can cross check with the post operative after correction uh, intraoperatively by passing the rod from the center of femoral leg to the center of ankle where it is going with the balancing. So, in this case, see this is what the intracontinental eminence is the center point, isthmus. And we are lateralized around 8 to 10 millimeter. So this is a lateral entry point. And you can see this is within the box cut. So we are not going out of the femur. And you can see there is a femur component. There is no overhang of the implant. And there is a box cut wherever this uh, in lateral entry point is coming within that this thing. So this is a, a technique uh, where we used a conventional technique was used in the Left side, lateral center point, lateral entry point used on the right side. So you can see this uh, accuracy is the mechanical is going center, right exactly in the ear on the right side. Lateral side, you can see there's a virus alignment. It's another example. So in this, in this our series, around 5 to 8 degree Boeing is there in 48% of cases. 9 to 12 degree Boeing is 44% cases. More than 12 degree is 68% of cases. And in that, the post op axis is within 3 millimeter in 48% uh, of cases. And more than 3 millimeter on the medial side in 8% of cases, 1% of cases, more than 3 millimeter on the lateral side. So, nearly in almost 90% of cases, your alignment is within reasonable with a good alignment and uh, free of the post op function good scores. As I told, this year 45. 4.5% had a virus tibial femoral angle, 2.3% as a valgus, and 93.0% of cases we were able to get reason of alignment. So linear aggression analysis shows that the positive correlation between your Boeing and the lateral entry point. So Lee et al. showed that uh, there's a maximum incidence of malalignment with the board femurs. So CASIs will be useful in such cases. Not all are able, you know, 
is not available easily because of the cost and the learning curve and there is a slight increase in the operating time the patient specific instrumentation has not proved its effectiveness in to especially in knee surgeries so that's why the cost effectiveness of psi has been also questioned and that's why it is not nobody uh, hardly people people are using this the articular osteotomy it needs two surgeries correction two more surgeries increases the morbidity so current instrumentation system as i told this where you can see this is a red color where a 12 degree swing this one second you can see this is a 13 degree with a red color if you moment you lateralize it it reduces to 8 degrees so that's the advantage and you are able to get reasonable alignment and uh, you can see this entry point is with the bell within the box cut problem with the lateral entry point is if you go more than 10 meter then it can leads to defect in the lateral condyle and the medial part that needs to be bone grafted we have done bone grafting two patients uh, this is the bone grafting we shown here so shifting the lateral point laterally you can get an accurate uh, correcting of the deformity avoidance of additional osteotomy of the femur doesn't require a cast or psi shifting the lateral point is not been reported earlier this simple and reliable method and uh, you don't require cast or any psi and decrease the incidence of uh, inaccurate uh, varus alignment so conclusion that the choice of entry point is is helpful in achieving the optimum post op alignment in case of both femur so we published in journal of orthoplasty this in 2017 uh, uh, or 2016 so you can read this article in that i thank you for your attention neeraj neeraj is not there uh, i think he must be right okay so i'll start with the questions uh, excellent presentation sir uh, one thing like sir i'm always fascinated to know whether when you operate on these type of knees so the medial defect now do you prefer to put in more of wedges or do you like to sir go with a screw fixation in order to pick up with the use a small bone graft a chunk of a bone graft and take care of the medial defect so what is the basic protocol no, you follow defect, it depends upon the type of how big is the defect right suppose the defect is very small uh, just you undersize the tibia and end up in as a, a screw and a cement Uh, one thing or uh, if it may not be sometimes that is also not necessary and sometimes right. you can use a bone graft if it's a defect is you know around 10 mm or so right if too large defect then maybe we can go for wedges wedges are hardly used bone graft it does well whenever there is a defect is there when you do bone grafting and always prefer to use a stem that will share the load that will share the load and how early do you mobilize such patients sir when you there is no problem with it because uh, we have a stem and we have a cement is there and uh, we have already re reconstructed the defect and if your alignment is good and if you are not kept the knee medial tightness i don't mm -hmm. think to worry right 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 uh, another question sir now this is uh, again uh, regarding uh, the varus knee suppose sir you are inclined to do a pie crusting i mean in most of the cases what we do usually so do you assess the mcl and then take your call sir whether you will be doing the pie crusting or not and or what is the protocol you follow so again yeah, the first thing is uh, once you open the knee you right. have to see there is a whether the knee is correctable or not right right so if it is a correctable uh, then you do a tpa the standard distal femur then again you assess okay. the gap with the medial right. lateral side if it is a slight uh, you know medial tightness is there you may not uh, release uh, you know pike press anything just medial a uh, posterior medial release uh, the posterior oblique ligament and uh, uh, deep collateral ligament uh, right. that is good enough and still if it is then after doing the ap cut then again come back and check again the medial is still tight and also in extension and flexion if it tight is there then mm -hmm. maybe we need a pike pressing with a, you know 80 number needle not i don't use a knife not done okay 80 number is good right right sir right sir. so another one more question from my end uh, 
what would you prefer to correct these alignments you go for the computer assisted measure or the conventional one sir sir actually what happened these all methods i started uh, no when the our uh, computer was there and it was not working then i started doing scanograms and started analyzing these deformities then right. i had to do conventionally means then started thinking that way that's how like right. uh, so if i don't get a, if you don't if I, either way i can do in the sense uh, right. if you don't have computer you can do this method i'm i'm able to get a good reasonable very good alignment right what would you prefer a conventional mosa compared to computer assisted yes um, because the, the long term now the results are not showing any superiority of the computer navigation versus conventional hence uh, the right. conventional technique is little faster and uh, right right listen you need to have a lot of patience with doing navigation search right 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 yani raj your question yes so i want to ask you two three questions simple i don't do much tkrs but whatever i have done so i have in the last a uh, few patients who are not happy i want to talk about those anap tkrs both were virus knees uh -huh. one of them is my aunt she has osteoarthritis in the other knee where it, the pain started i was telling you get a tkr done and then she got disabled and basically the other knee also started hurting a lot uh -huh. now she underwent a tkr that went very well and uh, but still she keeps on complaining of anterior knee pain patella was replaced in her case she keeps on complaining of anterior knee pain and in fact she is saying that the other knee is fine this knee is hurting me more nowadays <laughs> she is now 5 years da 5 years post tkr and she still keeps on insisting on taking a placebo like glucosamine chondroitin every day is <laughs> patella is replaced right yes but in spite of that she keeps on complaining that there is something not right in my knee i am not sure whether she complains of anterior knee pain but she still says ke isme dukhte rehta hai dukhte rehta so what exactly when she gets pain is it a continuous pain are getting up sitting position pain or climbing down the staircase is painful which is mostly climbing down the staircase uh you are the better person to judge in that you know you must be knowing it properly and uh, you say because uh, the climbing down the staircase either maybe uh either anti anterior patellar femoral pain or maybe the some amount of any laxity mid flexion laxity is the only concern or there is only two reasons why she should get climbing down the pain uh otherwise i don't think to uh, anything how, how she is mentally like uh, this, you know uh, she, she is uh, she is uh, she is not so comfortable man uh, that is what i feel we are pretty late the status of her mind before undergoing yeah. surgery can i share her x ray with you i have her x rays right now so maybe i'll just share you her x rays latest x rays were done few months back let me share those with you and maybe then you'll be able to give me a better judgment is there anything wrong Can you see the X-rays now? Yeah. Just a minute. Let me magnify them for you. Yeah. No, this is reasonable alignment. Mm. And uh, she is in FMD. See, there is a problem. I felt. What is this here? Which one? No, she doesn't have any FMD. She doesn't have any FMD. This X-ray was taken. AP X-ray. It was in a sort of a gap. You know, joint line is not very well seen. Like this, the left side. Hmm. It said it is like more of overlap. Maybe little left FD looks like ah. Uh, maybe the obliquity of the rays is coming from the up. That's yeah. Why we we are appreciating like that. Hmm. Uh, lateral view a skyline is there, Neeraj? No, I don't think I was taking a skyline. What is what is this? This is normal to see in this. You no, know, it, it is actually little overstuffing of the. Overstuffing. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That may be the reason for our anterior knee pain. Hmm. But uh, but if the overstuffing is there. she should get climbing up from the staircase or maybe getting up in sitting position also should get pain maybe she is getting i have not don't know the exact history i am actually uh, her uh, this uh, prolia injection is due so maybe i'll maybe take her history and get back to you very soon yeah. i have not seen her for the last 5 months after the lockdown mm -hmm. but because i have going i am going to do give the prolia myself so maybe that time i'll basically uh, see it uh, which in this is uh, what company this is max next okay PCL retaining or what? No, no, PCL uh, substituting. Okay, pegs are there. Okay, okay. Oh, so they are Zimmer. Yeah. This is Max, Max okay. knee. Uh, the Max imported one, not the Indian one. It was done many years back. I think it was done five or six years back. So this is one. Now I'll show you. Now I'll show you a recently. Ah. Uh, now I'll show you a recently done knee. In that case, what had happened? He had a major FFD before the surgery. Okay, and uh, he had this. Uh, I forgot his name. So he had a major FFD before surgery, 
and uh, we could correct the FFD on table, but somehow the FFD is come back. Means not so severe, but it is there. How much is the me... of FFD? Uh, can you see the screen still, or it has stopped? Yeah, it's, it's stopped. It's stopped. I can see this. Just a minute. Let me show you now. Now see this. This is the one. This is the recently done me. This is uh, you can make out. This is Atune. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, very well done me. Mm -hmm. Cement mantle is also good. Yeah, you are not replaced Patella at this case. Yeah, here we have not replaced Patella. Yeah, yeah. Mean see in this case, um, you uh, like. Uh, do you have any walking video or how much is the FMT is there? So it's not so much, but he comes to me that abhi bhi thora bahut dukte rehta hai. So this is what I have seen in my knee patients compared to hip patients. That hip patients just forget that they are anyways time operated. But knee patients na somehow they keep on coming back to me at least once a year or once in two years, and they complain that ha thora bahut abhi bhi pain, little bit pain is still there. No, no, actually, in Niraj, what happens in these hmm. cases na uh, on table your judgment is very important. Like in if you feel that little tight is there, don't come, don't uh, no. Maybe you just take artesian distal femur cut if you feel tight is there an extension. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you get an extension, especially mm -hmm. the male patients. Uh, if they have preoperative deformity is around 20, 30 degree or 20 yes. degree is there, mm -hmm. try to get a neutral alignment. Okay. Postoperatively, because if they have little 5, 10 degree FFD, these male patients they don't stretch out. Okay. Ah, uh, so that's how it is. Basically, oh you no, know, that is the main thing. And they have a difficulty in walking because of a five ten degree activity. That's why they yes. keep complaining. Yes. Uh, so this, I think, is basically that was the problem. He was male patient, a little heavy weight. Obvious. Uh, especially yeah. the male patients, a sort of tight knee. You know, you feel ten twenty degree activity itself is big enough for them. Hmm. But it's done well. The implant has come in well. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. X-ray is fantastic. Hmm. Comment on okay. okay. So I think this is from my side. Uh, uh, do you have anything else, Salim? No, no, that's all. That's all from my side. So, thank you, thank you, Dr. Raj Shekhar, for sparing your time and uh, for giving a wonderful presentation and for clearing all those people's doubts where big surgeons always speak about navigation and robots. And you're saving, and you're saying that you can give equally good results now, long-term results. That what happened? No? Yes. I, I, I was trained with Dr. Sijit Akhtar. Yes. He was the first person to yes. to have navigation in his. Yes. Right. 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 Uh, then we started doing navigation. I'm used to that navigation. Yes. Then when he came to Bangalore, there the navigation was working. But again, I was forced to use sometimes uh, that hmm. conventional method. Then I started doing this scanogram. Then I analyzed those, those patients. Of those patients, of TB and hmm. femur. There is a lot of variation was there. That's how we are right. able to come to this technique. So for surgeons like me who work in smaller hospitals all over India, and there are so many of us that who work in smaller hospitals, our own nursing homes, and Even they don't have access to. Not TB. possible, no. Best yes. just take the simple TBI AP. Yes. Hmm. Right, TB. right. That gives and so navigation is not required for at least the simple varus knees. Certainly not is what we have shown today. Absolutely. And we thank you very much. We thank Dr. Salim Patel and we thank Zaidus for this Digitalk series, and hope to see you next week again. Good night and bye bye. Okay, bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you.